Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cincinnati Law Virtually. My name is Elise Kruger, and I am the admissions officer here at Cincinnati College of Law. And I'm here today to talk to you about the admissions process, the requirements that are necessary. Um, I'll touch a little bit on scholarships and financial aid and hit a couple of reasons of why we think Cincinnati Law is the best um, and without further ado, I will kind of jump in and then at the end, it will present our admissions contact information. And if you guys have any questions or want to reach out about anything in particular, please don't hesitate to do so. So without further ado, I will jump on in. So I'm going to start off with talking about our programs that we offer here at UC Law. We have two different types of programs. We have our full time JD and we have our flex time JD. So our full-time JD is the traditional three-year track. Um, you are looking at about 16 to 18 credit hours a semester. Our flex time is a variant of that full-time. Uh, it's important to note that we do consider ourselves a traditional law school. So therefore we don't have any part-time programs or online programs. The flex time JD is a lessened workload and you complete your Juris Doctorate within four years instead of three. And you're looking at about 12 to 13 credit hours a semester. Uh, again, circling back to the fact that we consider ourselves a traditional law school. Up until COVID, none of the classes were online, no summertime courses. Everything was in person. Uh, the building was open 24 hours for students, but classes traditionally being anywhere between 7 to 8 a.m. to about 5 or 6 p.m. Um, and we are hoping to move back to that, but we are moving relatively fluid with uh, COVID and those processes as we deem necessary. Uh, we do offer several different dual degrees and we're continuously adding on to these dual degree options. Uh, we currently offer a JD MBA, a JD MA Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies, and then a JD Masters of, Com and then a JD Masters of Community Planning, excuse me. Um, so these dual degrees, you apply to each school separately. And then once you're accepted, that's when you start building your track or your path of how you want to tackle these degrees. Uh, usually we see students come and they defer their first year of law school and they complete their master's in that time. And then they complete their three years of law school. Or we will see students that will come in and do their first year of law school and then take their what would be their 2L year and complete their master's, and then they come back and complete their two years of law school. Now I'm going to discuss our current 1L class profile. So this class entered in the uh, fall of 2020 and will be graduating in the spring of 2023. This class size is 134 students. We keep our student body small, and I will touch on that a little bit later on. Uh, we do so for specific reasons. Uh, so you have 134 students in this 1L class. The female representation is 52%. The age range is anywhere between 20 to 40 years old. We have the average age being 24. Minority students are represented 14%, LGBTQIA plus 8%, and then total majors that are represented are 40. That's the awesome thing about law school is that your but major doesn't have to be, say, in pre-law or criminal justice or political science. Um, it can be in anything. And then your first year really prepares you for what's to come in your remaining years of law school. Um, you'll see here that we have top majors that are represented. Political science definitely is a popular field. But you'll see that we have a lot of English, criminal justice, finance, psychology. Um, more recently, we're starting to see more environmental um, you know, things along those lines, as well as history, um, really any major you can come to law school with. You'll see down below our 25th, our 50th, and our 75th percentile. So the 50th percentile are where our medians are. Every law school has a median for an LSAT and an undergraduate GPA. It's important to look at those things when you're applying so that you kind of know where you will fall in terms of where your undergraduate GPA is and what you score on the LSAT and where you fall in those medians for uh, law schools. Ours, uh, our median, excuse me, is a 158, and our undergraduate GPA is a 3.65. And then you'll see that 25th percentile is a 155 and a 3.43. And then our 75th percentile is a 161 and a 3.76. 
I will be touching a little bit more on these specific merits a little bit later on in the presentation. So this is the timeline for this um, current recruitment year. So uh, the rolling, the incoming class, excuse me, for fall of 2021. These timelines tend to stay relatively um, about the same in terms of, you know, beginning of the month, end of the month, so on and so forth. Uh, so typically our application cycle will begin in September of the year that you're interested in applying. Uh, our, this year, our cycle started September 1st, and then you'll see that it will go as late to July 15th. But you'll also note that in between there are priority deadlines and then um, a recommended application deadline. So that priority deadline, we recommend getting your application in by January 15th. There are certain perks that come with priority deadlines. It's a non-binding um, choice, but you do have certain perks in terms of application fee waivers and then a lesson seat deposit when the time comes if you are accepted and choose to enroll at UC. Um, the, we have accepted student days. We have fall open houses um, for prospective students. So September, the application process cycle starts November 6th, or sometime in November, we have a prospective student open house. And then coming up in January, we will have that first choice priority deadline. March 5th, we tend to have accepted student days in the beginning of March. And also you'll see a little bit further on the beginning of April. And then March, sometime between the um, I guess second to third week of March, we will have the recommended application deadline. We have what's called rolling admissions and scholarships. So as long as we have seats and as long as we have scholarship money, um, we are working on our cycle. Um, so the sooner you apply, the better, because obviously more seats and potentially more money. Uh, you'll see that if you are accepted, we do have the deposit deadlines. So typically sometime in the beginning of April and then at the very beginning of June. Um, again, if you apply by that priority application deadline, you have the opportunity for those seat deposits to be lessened. Typically, they're $250 a piece. And then again, our final application deadline is July of the year that you intend to apply. And we highly recommend not waiting until that date to do so. We have the fall transfer and then visiting student applications. So uh, those deadlines are listed and then you have other um, obligations to fulfill before enrolling. So submitting your final transcripts, your residency applications, and then uh, your loan refunds for your accounts. So moving into what is required to apply at the University of Cincinnati College of Law. These requirements tend to be relatively the same across the board at various law schools um, or some variation of them. So you have to have your bachelor's degree or a four year equivalent. So um, the equivalent typically tends to apply for international students. Bachelor's degree tends to apply for um, U.S. residents. So the completed application, so everything on uh, from your undergraduate transcripts to your letters of recommendation, your personal statement, character and fitness, so on and so forth. You must have a LSAT score, so law school admissions test. Again, that circles into the medians. Those are, uh, that is a test that you register for through LSAT, the Law School Admissions Council, excuse me. And then they are basically your one-stop shop for completing your application along the way. So you must have two letters of recommendation. And again, that's submitted through LSAC. Uh, we highly recommend obtaining letters of recommendations from current professors who can speak on behalf of your academic performance. If you are somebody who has chosen to take a gap year, and I've worked in a professional setting. We also accept letters of recommendation from uh, supervisors and people that you've worked with professionally who are above you and have uh, been a part of management with, with or above you. Your Credential Assembly Service Report. So this again is circling back to that LSAC one-stop shop, right? 
So you've got, um, it's called your CAS report, and that's going to include your LSAT score or scores, your transcripts from your undergraduate universities, if you attended more than one as well, and then your LSAT writing sample. Uh, we do require a personal statement, which we recommend being about two pages double spaced, and then a updated resume, a TOEFL or IELTS score if applicable, and then um, if you are a transfer or have previously attended law school, that information as well. So how does the admissions review process work? So we typically begin reviewing applications in early October. And then the admissions committee is comprised of five faculty and two current students. So the way that the admissions process works is once all of your files from LSAC are received, they are sent to the law school. Somebody looks at that for completion. So making sure that everything on this prior slide is in there. And then here at UC, somebody in our admissions office reviews your file, and then it moves to the admissions committee, which as you can see, and again, it, it is comprised of five faculty members and then two current students. Once a unanimous vote is reached on your file, then that is uh, sent to you within a couple days of the committee meeting. So the committee conducts a holistic approach, a uh, holistic review of all of the application components, including the personal statement, the letters of recommendation, along with the academic merit, such as your LSAT and your undergraduate GPA. So, you know, some people might have what we call a split, which is say a lower GPA, higher LSAT or vice versa. Um, there can be other components to your application that might um, increase something for the committee in terms of what their decision is. When are these decisions made? Again, decisions are made on a rolling basis. So they're typically rendered within two to three weeks of when your application is marked complete. Moving on to scholarships, you are automatically considered for a scholarship upon applying. There's a small box on our application that asks if you're interested in applying for a scholarship, you mark yes or no, and then there's about three to four different questions that you will fill out below that. Um, and then when you receive your decision letter, if accepted, you re also receive your scholarship at the same time. You will see here that 94% of Cincinnati Law students receive scholarships, so that's 94% of people who apply and attend. And then over the last nine years, 100% of those scholarships have been renewed. You must remain in academic good standing to do so, um, which I don't want to say that it's easy as law school is not an easy feat, but um, it's, it's obtainable. So now we'll move into financial aid. So these are the types of loans that you can be eligible for if you have not succeeded your student loan life. Uh, you can be eligible for your federal direct unsubsidized Stafford loan, uh, which is for students who are US citizens or eligible non-citizens, you are guaranteed a maximum of 20,500 per academic year. And then the federal direct graduate plus loan which would be used to cover the difference between the cost of attendance for your program, uh, less any other forms of financial aid. So all this talk about scholarships and financial aid, you are probably wondering what the cost of uh, tuition is and what it looks like financially to attend the University of Cincinnati College of Law. So the cool thing about UC is that we sit in the tri-state area. So we have Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky, and we offer different rates for those residents, uh, as well as out-of-state applicants. So the Ohio resident tuition is $24,010. The non-resident tuition is $29,010. The Kentucky metro rate for Kentucky residents is $24,610. And then we also offer a Indiana reciprocity, which is in-state tuition of 24,010. We are the third most affordable law school in the entire country. 
So our graduates leave with debt levels nearly $80,000 less than the national average for public and private law schools. And again, 100% of the scholarships have been renewed for the last nine years. So our median scholarship is about 15,000 per year. So you're already looking at potentially having half of um, your tuition covered. The fun little workarounds sometimes for people who are non-residents or people who are out-of-state applicants, we offer the Kentucky Metro rate. Northern Kentucky is just right across the river and it's about 12 to 15 minutes from the law school. And it is a quicker process to become a Kentucky resident than it is an Ohio resident. In Kentucky, you have to have a lease and then a driver's license to qualify through the residency office for the Kentucky Metro rate. In Ohio, if you do out of state your first year, you're looking at 29,010, and then um, you must be and live in Ohio for a year before you can qualify for residency. So you'd be looking at 29,010 that first year, and then the last two years in state, if you so choose to become an Ohio resident. If you choose to become a Kentucky resident, right off the bat, you're starting law school at 24,610. So in-state tuition plus $600. Um, I know that that was a lot, but um, we always like to be very informative in terms of finances because that's a very big drawing point for a lot of students. So lastly, I will move into why we think you should choose Cincinnati Law. We are ranked a top 45 public law school by the US News and World Report. We're the fourth oldest continuously operating law school in the entire country. We are, again, the third most affordable law school in the nation. We are a six time best value law school. So you're getting this top tier education for this really awesome price. We have a 92% ultimate bar passage rate, which is a multi-year average, ranking second in the state of Ohio. We are the only law school in the city of Cincinnati, so you don't have a bunch of other competitive law schools in the local area. Um, there's over 800 law firms in the city of Cincinnati, and we're home to more Fortune Fives per capita than LA, New York, and Chicago. We are ranked a top 16 public law school for public service. We are also ranked a top school for criminal law, corporate law, public interest law, and trial advocacy. We have a small student to teacher run small student to teacher ratio of eight to one, um, meaning that we have one of the lowest in the nation for urban school. Our faculty, they are one of the largest drawing points for a lot of our students. Um, anytime I have students that come to visit the University of Cincinnati, if they stop and ask a current law student why they chose UC, one of the very first answers that they say is the faculty. Um, we keep our class sizes small, so that we have this eight to one student to teacher ratio so that you are not just another face in the lecture hall. You are your own person um, and you are noticed, you are heard. Uh, they have time for literally all of the students. Uh, we really pride ourselves in our small student base um, and then our faculty as well. Again, our graduate debt levels are nearly $80,000 less than the national law school average. So. It's just an awesome, again, circling back to the best value law school. You get this top tier education for this amazing price. Um, and you actually get to enjoy your you know, time when you're done with law school. You don't have to focus so much on your debt levels. Um, we are a top 14 for practical training, which is not listed on here, but meaning you get in the work field. So externships and internships are, um, you know, Obtainable externships are guaranteed 100% by our Center for Professional Development. Um, the list of why we think you should choose Cincinnati Law could go on for hours about it. Um, but I will spare you all the time. And you will see here that we have our website on here, which I would highly recommend looking at. You can create your own custom view book. So say if you're interested in public interest law, and don't want to know anything about health law, you can create your own view book that is customized to your own experience. So you can create that custom view book at law.uc.edu. If any of you have any questions after watching this uh, brief presentation, please feel free to reach out to us at admissions at law.uc.edu 
or please feel free to give me a direct call. My telephone number is listed there at 513-556-0078. Again, my name is Elise Kruger and I'm the admissions officer here at Cincinnati Law. And I would love to talk to you all more in depth about why we think that you should come to UC. I look forward to speaking with you all, hopefully.